Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it's good to visit with you today. This Sunday in the liturgical calendar is Christ the King Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the Christian year. It's a, a Sunday of transition as we end Pentecost, and next week we begin Advent and once again make our pilgrimage to Bethlehem. But Christ the King Sunday reminds us of the kingship or sovereignty of Christ and the expect expectation that Christ will come again. We are reminded of the majesty of God's rule in Psalm 93.1, which says, The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. In this simple opening verse of Psalm 93, the psalm celebrates the kingship of the Lord. God is enthroned as the king of the universe. God is pictured for us as an earthly monarch, robed in the garments of royalty. He is to be praised for his creation and for his stable control of the world. Now, Twyla Pyrus took this text and wrote a beautiful praise chorus, We Will Glorify the King of Kings. The song proclaims wonderfully, we will glorify the King of Kings, we will glorify the Lamb, we will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. He is the Lord of heaven, Lord of earth, He is the Lord of all who live. He is the Lord above the universes, all praise to Him we give. The scripture and the song got me to reflecting on my life and I think those in my congregation. And I asked myself, who is the king and Lord of my life? Now, my friends, it's obvious what the answer is supposed to be, God. It is God who sits on the throne. It is Jesus who sits at his right hand. It is God who is creator and Jesus who is redeemer. It is you and you and I who are the created and who has been redeemed. There can be little doubt as we ponder this question, who should be on the throne of our lives? But is it so? Today, as I want to speak so to kind of like to the choir, to fellow Christians, what or who has displaced God from being your king? Let's be honest with each other. We don't mean to, but certainly there are times in our lives, if we're honest, that uh, things get in the way of allowing God to be God. Has the pursuit of success, however you might define success, has that made work and the accumulation of material wealth such a driving force in your life that you neither have the time or the energy to give to God? We don't mean to. But sometimes getting that next promotion, buying that bigger house, getting a nicer car, or just wanting more gets a hold of us, and they become an end to themselves. So I ask you, does success lord over your life? Another thought, has the pursuit of happiness become such a driving force that getting that cabin, whether it be in the mountains or by the seashore, become a must rather than something that might be nice? Has our desire for more and more adult toys, things like four-wheelers, campers, boats, etc., you name what that might be, where we put in such a large investment that we feel like we have to make sure we get our money's worth out of those things? And you know, if we're real, Sometimes it's just a restlessness, always looking for that next pleasure that keeps us so busy that we don't have time for church, for family, or friends. So I ask you, has the pursuit of happiness taken over your life? Well, my friends, I'm not sure what it might be for you, but I want to ask you to join me in reflecting over the next few days about is God truly the Lord of your life? And if you, if you find in your reflecting that something else is lording over your lives instead of God, 
Let's have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God. Let's ask God to help us, to help us by rethinking our priorities, simplifying our lives, and maybe we need to let go of some things so that God can be the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and that we can honestly put God, we can restore God to the throne of our lives. We don't just want to sing or say the right words. But we want to make sure that we're letting God be the Lord of our life as we get right with him again. Amen. Now, there are a few things that I want to share with you about many things that are happening here at Wesley Church. Um, Christmas is coming. The kids now have been practicing a couple of weeks, and uh, I don't think it's too late uh, if you'd like to have your child join. Uh, they practice on Tuesday evenings at 6 30 uh, right here in the sanctuary if you have any questions about that um sure make sure you get a hold of amy whitworth or cindy lacroce if you picked up uh one of the ornaments uh for the join hands gifts children program uh, that's currently underway please make sure that your gift is returned to the church um unwrapped by november 28th um, there's a box in the lobby that you can place your gifts in and uh, you can see the church for additional details. On Monday, November 22nd, starting at 9.30 a.m., we'll be decorating the church. More hands makes easier work, and we know the fellowship is always sweet when we get together to do the Lord's work. Uh, in preparation for that work, following today's service, if you can stay and help bring the decorations up from the second floor, that would be greatly appreciated. The adult Sunday school class will be beginning a new Advent study on November 28th. They're going to be studying Adam Hamilton's faithful Christmas through the eyes of Joseph. The study will be conducted online via Zoom uh, beginning at 1045 uh, on Sunday morning. You can contact uh, the church office or Jeff Miller to have your name added to the invite email. Books are also available in the church office for a suggested donation of $5. And finally, men's breakfast uh, will, have, will be held again on November 30th at 9 a.m. All men are invited to join us for a wonderful time of food and fellowship. Well, let's close our time together with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father, we love you, we worship you, and we adore you. Help us to stay humble and to make sure that you are our King and Lord. Help us to live in a way that in all that we say and do, we glorify you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my friends, thank you for visiting with me today. We'll talk again soon. May the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe. Bye.